What's going on, YouTube? I'm that clone guy, E, and this is Simply Put Sensa. And on this channel, I talk about some of the best and worst fragrances on the market today. Typically some of the best, though. And my goal is to help you guys save time and money. And so please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when these lives happen. Every Wednesday, I do a live here from Bergdorf Goodman, the one and only the most luxurious department store in these United States. And it is an absolute pleasure to share with you all week to week content that hopefully you enjoy, hopefully is entertaining, informative. But at the end of the day, I just want to offer you all things that you don't normally get elsewhere. So, and what I'm not feeling is this. We got to get rid of that. <laughs> anyway, guys, so hope you're well. And, um, and thank you so much for joining. Um, so today's live stream, and I know I'm so, so late. Forgive me. Today's live stream is all about an amazing brand called Mind Games. And Mind Games is a really, really interesting brand. A lot of people have been telling me that I need to smell some Mind Games. So I am excited to get my nose on them. Now, six, there's going to be Mind Games. Mind Games will be coming into the Burnt of Goodman store later this year. And so ahead of that, I was able to get basically their entire line and samples to experience and explore. And I am excited. I've heard some really, really positive things about this brand. And, um, you know, typically the people I've heard say positive things about them are people that I I think have really good taste and fragrance. So I'm curious to see what Mind Games is all about. Uh, but before I get into that, my scent of the day, my scent of the day was from a brand called Margiela. <laughs> Maison Martin Margiela did a fragrance that was has long been discontinued and it was called Flying. And Flying is basically Mugler Cologne. So imagine that old green Mugler Cologne fragrance that kind of got stepped on and reformulated horribly. So take that fragrance, put it in a black bottle, charge almost 200 for it, and there you got flying. But I got to tell you, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful experience. Um, very clean, Irish spring in a bottle type of vibe. Really cool. Um, but yeah, so that was my scent of the day. Hope you all are smelling amazing. I really, really do. Uh, so let's get into mind games uh, because I've never smelled this line before and I'm, I'm really, really curious about them. So I'm not even going to, I don't have blotters, <laughs> which is a problem because how am I going to spray them? But I figured it out. I left my blotters downstairs. I was rushing, guys. I had a client at the last minute, and she was creeping into my time with you guys. So I had to, like, prioritize. Because at the end of the day, I got to make money for my brand, the maker. And um, today wasn't a bad day, you know. Um, by the way, guys, if you need any samples from the maker, just email me, and I will be sending you samples. And I think you'll love what they do. Um, the maker is really on point. Anyway, so I wanted to share with you what my thoughts are on mind games. I don't have blotters, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray the cards themselves and smell that, and that'll be that. Um, there are 10 fragrances to go through, so I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm just going to get right into it and smell these Mema Jammers. Um, before I go anywhere, though, I am going to look up mind games website. And this way I have an idea <laughs> of what they're doing. So I got to tell you guys, I'm kind of into this. I'm really, really excited about this line because it's been, there have been some really, really, really good, good comments made about this brand. Uh, let's do this. Uh, duh, 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 duh. So I'm going to start off. With the fragrances that people tend to say are, you know, the ones that they like the best. And I'm going to use Parfumo.net as my gauge. And I'm going to start off with a fragrance called Jadoub. Jadoub. Here we go. From Mind Games. Jadoub. Sounds cool. Interesting 
name, Jadu begins with a whisper of warning. An intriguing sensation engulfs us in an opening of pomegranate, rouge, grusai, rouge, grusai, I don't know what that is, and mandarin. As the fragrance surges forward in a wave of tantalizing sweetness, its evolution towards a bold and deep base of leather, patchouli, and ambrostar brings focus to chaos while remaining wholly spontaneous and free. Interesting. Jadoub. The idea of Mind Games, by the way, guys, is this brand basically celebrates the game of chess, hence the word games, hence the word Mind Games, because there is nothing more mentally stimulating in terms of a board game than the game of chess. Like, it is a nerd's game for sure. I tried to learn it. I did learn how to, I know how to play the game. I know how to, but the best chess players remember certain moves and they trap you and they think four or five moves ahead of you. And so, like, when you play a chess master, it's game over before your first move. But it's a very fascinating game in general. It's all about war, life. I mean, there's so many different, like, metaphors for the game of chess in our in our daily lives. But anyway, getting into Jadoub, I don't know what Jadoub is. I don't know if it's the crook or the knight of this board game, but we're going to spray this fragrance and see what it's doing. Um, it begins with a whisper of warning, supposedly. So I just sprayed this. Oh, man. This is sexy, guys. This is a dark, fruity experience. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely sexy. This is a very fruity fragrance, but it's red fruit. So pomegranate, berries, that type of vibe. Very, very dark fruit. Nothing like happy. <laughs> this is like a sexy fruit, you know, not a happy fruity. I could see people who like Herba Pura wearing this, people who like um, Kirke from Tiziana Terenzi liking this. If you're a fan of those fragrances, you'll find this attractive. And this is nothing like those two. This is not duping that. This is There's nothing that I've smelled that reminds me of this. It has a little bit of pomegranate noir, but not as dark or bitter. This is a lot more juicy. <laughs> Jadoub. Now I get why people have been talking about this one. Oof. Jadoub. Jadoub is a... Yes. <laughs> I like the way this smells. Um, it's very pretty. I could see a lot of women appreciating it. I think a guy could wear it, but it's definitely a pretty fruit. So... It's definitely niche pretty, you know? But a man can easily wear it. You can a man can wear anything at the end of the day. It's all about your confidence, guys, you know. But damn, this is really attractive though. Like if I were to wear this fragrance, I would probably wear it like if I were going out. I would probably wear this out. I know that sounds a little counterintuitive. But I would wear this to a party. And I think if a female wore this to a party, she would probably be one of the best smelling women in the room. Without question. Jadoub. Okay. We're off to a good start. Um, I'm really into it. Um, let's look at the ingredients in Jadoub. Jadoub has a very interesting note breakdown, as you all heard. So Parfumo rates it very high, 8.6 out of 10. But of course, only seven people have rated this. This brand only came out last year. So it's a very, very new line. The fragrance was made by Natalie Barnow, Barnaro, excuse me, <laughs> or excuse me, Binaru. <laughs> Binaru, Natalie Binaru, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll <laughs> I might be completely destroying it, but anyway. Um, so I definitely the I definitely smell the patchouli not as hard. All I get is like the redness and the rose and the pomegranate. I really like it though. Like that smells good. Um, 
The next fragrance I'm going to talk about is called Gaudé. Gaudé. And Gaudé is Gardez. <laughs> um, it's Gaudé. There we go. Um, now, this fragrance is also from the black side of the tract. There's white samples and black samples. I should have been a lot more prepared in telling you what the differences between those two are, but I'll be doing a training for mind, for mind games this year, and I will be able to let you know when I revisit. Um, Gaudet, though, smells like popcorn. This is really interesting. It smells like it smells like buttered caramel popcorn with lipstick. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, Galde is a very interesting fragrance, guys. It's very, very warm, kind of. Almost buttery. Hmm. <laughs> this smells like an interpretation of popcorn, guys. Very, very fascinating scent. Very lipsticky, though. I'm, I'm curious. Let's, let's see. Let's get into these notes. Um, Galde. Let me show you guys. Galde is 7.5 out of 10. Only two people rated it. I got to say, though, I like the way this smells. I find it very, very unique and interesting. Apricot, blackberry leaf, blackcurrant, jasmine, sambac, orris root. That's where the, the lipstick is coming from. It's a very waxiness. It's a very waxy, lipsticky thing going on. Not lipsticky as in feminine, but lipsticky. It also has rosewood, cedarwood, leather, and popcorn. No wonder it smells like popcorn. It smells like popcorn, guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, the ratings for the fragrance seems pretty decent, you know, out of the two people who talked about it. But do I like this fragrance? I do. It's very unique and interesting. I also like the apricot. Now that, I'm in, now that I said the word apricot, it's really coming forward. Apricots, iris or oris, and popcorn. Those are the three things that I smell the most in Garde. But I do find it fascinating and interesting. This is a fragrance that I would actually like or buy because there's nothing in my collection that smells like it. It's very original in its way it's coming across. I would like to see how this works on skin. There's also leather in this fragrance, so I'm really curious. I like leather and cedarwood, so. Garde, okay. Garde is really interesting. Um, mm, I think I would like to smell Jadoub more, but I could, I can see. Garde is interesting. It's a little salty though. I'm not a fan of salty fragrances. That's why it's not winning me over like that. But I do got to say it's it's very interesting and unique and attractive because of that. Uh, a lot of fragrances are nowhere near interesting these days. So when I smell a fragrance that's doing things in an interesting way, it does make me pay attention. Um, the next fragrance, guys, this one is called. The next fragrance is called Scholar's Mate. Uh, and it says, Scholar's Mate is an ode to partnership and is sparkling with promise. Cardamom leaf. I love cardamom, guys. Cardamom leaf, grapefruit, and powdery orris melts into a foundation of smooth and creamy sandalwood, rounded and completed by the elegance and vitality of vetiver. Subtle notes of smoke nod to the spark of energy that transpires when partners, companions, and friends and lovers come together in the spirit of collaboration. Mm, interesting wording. Um, <laughs> fascinating thing. This looks like the Rook 
on the chessboard. So the diagonal, the, the diagonal piece on the chessboard. Um, interesting. I would have... I would have found it. I would have found a way to create a character using all of the pieces on the board. Like based on how they move, I would have assigned like personalities to each one of these chess pieces, and then I would have created a story based on that, as opposed to this, which seems as if they're just like um, just saying a bunch of stuff. <laughs> but I'm curious to see how this works. Um, scholars mate. Oh, this is pickly. Ooh, this is pickly and interesting and not a bad way. I am appreciating it. It's spicy. But it smells pickly. <laughs> it smells very, very, very pickly. Okay, so... I got to say, I like this one. Uh, this is seriously nice. I'm, I'm into the scholars, mate. Uh, wow. Let's get into these ingredients, shall we? Uh, this is really, really interesting, guys. So this fragrance, bergamot, cardamom, cardamom leaf, grapefruit, Elemi et resin, orris root, pimento. That's the spice that I'm smelling. Cipriol, which is used in leather accords. Fig milk, Indian sandalwood, Madagascan vetiver. Ay, ay, ay. I like this, guys. When I first sprayed it, I was like, whoa, this is weird. But when it settled a little bit, it really started to make a lot of sense. Um, it's a green, creamy, interesting experience. Wow. Wow. It's very well blended. Very, 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 very well blended. I definitely smell the sandalwood in this fragrance. And I think the pickly thing that I was getting came from pimento. Yeah. So, smelling this, this is amazing. It's beautiful. It's... It's weird, <laughs> and that's probably why I like it so much, because it's just unique and interesting, and it's not trying to be, it's not trying to be everyone's favorite fragrance. That's what I love. I don't want a fragrance that, you know, that tries hard, you know? I want a fragrance that, that is, I don't want to, I don't want a mass appealing fragrance any, uh, personally, as much anymore. Um, so a scent like this really, really makes sense to me. And I like mass appealing fragrances. Don't get me wrong. Like, I, I love them. I like to experience them. I just don't buy them as often. I like them. I can tell you, damn, that one is worthy of your time. But that's not something that I'm into at this stage of my journey. Like, I have a lot of fragrances that are easy breezy, you know. Now I'm into my stinky cheese phase in my journey. I'm, I'm into those fragrances that stand out in a dope way that make you smell expensive, that make you smell memorable, that make you smell interesting. I don't want to smell basic anymore. I've been there, done that. And honestly, you just smell like everybody you don't want to associate with. <laughs> That's what I feel like, you know. Anyway, um, now I'm really, really getting Scholar's Mate. It's essentially a sandalwood fragrance. And it's funny because I said it gave me a little bit of that pickle vibe. That's literally Santal 33, sandalwood and pickles, pickle juice and sandalwood. That's Santal 33 to me by the Labo. This fragrance is getting very close to doing that, but it did it in a very roundabout way. 
I didn't notice the sandalwood until the pickle juice kind of calmed down, and all of a sudden now I'm getting tons of sandalwood. And the pickles chilled out. Yeah. This is a good alternative to Song Tall 33. If you're a sandalwood aficionado, you might kind of like this one. Um, they promote it as vetiver and cedar. It's clearly a sandalwood fragrance, though. You will not smell sandalwood or cedar more than you smell. You will not smell vetiver or cedar more than you smell sandalwood in this fragrance. And it's considered a sandalwood. I mean, a cedar vetiver scent, according to the paper, according to this. But it's not. It's not. It's absolutely not. Anyway, not bad. Not my favorite. Um, so far, I feel like Jadoub is the best of the three that I've smelled so far. The next fragrance is a fragrance called Grand Master. And uh, let's see. Grand Master. Mm. I'm curious. Grand Master, according to the language of the fragrance, uh, Grand Master strikes swiftly as the softness transforms into unmatched strength. Opening notes of exquisite florals soar willfully. <laughs> while rich and energizing coffee notes mingle with the spicy seduction of incense, myrrh, and dark wood. The flawless harmony of power and tenderness astonish the senses, awakening the knowledge of our own divine potential. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, man. Like, yo, these, the, the people who write this stuff, Fascinating, fascinating. Okay. Ooh, I like this. I like this coffiness. This coffiness is popping. This coffiness is truly, truly legit. Whoa. The spiciness of it is beautiful. Ooh, this is good. Ooh, hoo, hoo. grand master. And of course, this is the king. Check it out, guys. This is the king on the chessboard. Isn't it the king? Isn't the king the one with the cross on the top? I could have sworn the king has the, <laughs> I could have sworn the, yeah, it's definitely the king. I mean, yeah, it's definitely the king. Mm. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I'm a fan of coffee. The first fragrance that got me into like collecting fragrances was uh, Mugler um, Amen, which is a beautiful coffee-forward scent. Well, it has a lot of coffee in it, and it got me into coffee, too. I also love Follow. I love um, Intense Cafe, Rosetto, Rosetto by um, Montal. I love Little Song by, um, what is that? Mayo Fushini, I believe is the name of that brand. I love, love, love coffee. I don't, yo, that's a, I don't know. Uh, the great, great question, G-Man. Um, I'm not sure if it's the, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm really not sure. <laughs> oh, no. Um, so my man G-Man asks, Bishop has the cross, not the knot. Does he not? Oh, does, I'm so funny. I'm, guys, my contacts are fuzzy. <laughs> Bishop has the cross, does he not? Yes, I would have. Doesn't it? The bishop has the. No, the bishop doesn't have a cross on the top of the head. The bishop just has like that. The bishop just has like the, the the bell top, you know. If I'm correct, I could have sworn the king wears the wears the wears the cross. It's awesome. I don't care who wears it. This is awesome. <laughs> K 
king has a crown, but I could have sworn the crown, I could have sworn on the top of the crown there is a cross. Bro, if you're gonna make me look this up, <laughs> you really gonna do that? I'm gonna look it up. See, that's the cool thing about being live. We don't have to play. Um, and damn it, I gotta hold on, let me let me there we go. That little corner was that that corner up there that was supposed to be complete. Okay, now it's complete. Now you don't see any anything. Um, let's look at chess pieces. Bro, you got me curious, bro. <laughs> oh no. See, I knew I wasn't bugging. Okay, I'm gonna show you my screen. So now we're all together now. Um Okay, so according to according to <laughs> Google, the king has the cross on the top of the crown. See, I know I wasn't bugging. And see, there's the bishop. The bishop is ah. You were thinking the rook has the 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 rook reminds me of the top of a castle, like a castle, um, a castle. <laughs> uh, but okay. So yeah, um, <laughs> Grandmaster guys is insane. If you're a coffee fan, you're gonna like this. It's beautiful. It's not a typical. It's not a typical um, coffee fragrance either. It's actually doing a coffee experience in a very, very interesting and unique way, which is why I'm into it. Um, I'm really into it. This would be my fragrance out of what I've smelled so far. I would easily buy this. I would easily buy this. I'm a, I'm a fan of coffee. What can I tell you? Um, let me show you what people say about this fragrance on Parfumo. So let me show my screen. So according to Parfumo, <laughs> this fragrance is a 9.3 out of 10 on Parfumo, which is really, really awesome. Um, and only four ratings, of course, but it does say a lot that people find it beautiful. The longevity and, and um, sillage rating for this fragrance is really, really high. It has black currant, peony, rose water, rose, coffee, violet, ebony, frankincense, myrrh, and penitone. I don't know what that is. That's clearly like a, a synthetic ingredient. I don't know what that does though. But essentially this is a coffee with incense experience, an incense -y coffee fragrance with rose. I don't smell as much violet. I do get some black currant. I definitely understand there's peony in this. I get that floral aspect of sweet softness in the beginning. But it's a really beautiful take on coffee. A smoky coffee. Oh, man. Okay, Mind Games is playing with me. This scent is... Uh, it's, it's, it's real good, guys. Like, it's real, real good. If you're a coffee fan, you, you're, it's, it's, hard. it's hard for me to think you're not going to like that one. Um, Scholar's Mate. Now, Scholar's Mate looks like the Rook. This fragrance, let's look at this. Let's go back. Scholar's Mate. Another fragrance rated very high on Parfumo. This fragrance is bergamot, cardamom, cinnamon leaf, grapefruit in the top. Heart notes of Elemi resin, oris, pimento. And base notes of cypriol, fig. Wait a minute. Didn't I talk about this? Didn't I talk about this? Yes, I did. There's two of these in here. Okay, so <laughs> there's two scholars made. So uh, we're gonna skip this and go back and go into the white samples now. Um, out of the four that I smelled from this line, I really think Grandmaster is a winner. I feel like Grandmaster is the star of the show on this side of the tracks in the black uh, options, yeah. So the black bottles of these black bottles right here, honestly, Jadub and Grandmaster 
are going to be clear in a way favorites to me. Garday is really interesting. Gaudet is really, really, really interesting. I would, I would buy that. Scholar's Mate smells too much like Santal. It's like Santal has ruined sandalwood for me, guys. Because so many beautiful sandalwood fragrances just remind me of it. And now I don't even want to smell like it because it smells so popular. It smells like a, a popular Santal 33 fragrance. So, I mean, it's like for me, finding a fragrance with sandalwood in it that does not remind me of Santal is like the mission, you know, because everything smells like it to me nowadays. This is clearly their Santal 33. I like it, though. <laughs> I like it. Um, depending on the price point, I would consider it over Santal 33 because I don't get pickle juice at this point. Although I did in the beginning, not going to lie. Okay, so we're going to get into these white bottles. Um, I'm excited about this uh, Checkmate. I'm excited about all of these because they're so far, Mind Games... Is, is doing a good job, um, killing it right now. Um, so, checkmate. I just guessed that that was going to be the right one, guys, and I'm so glad I landed on it. So, this fragrance is another one, highly rated. Goodness gracious. Um, I'm going to spray this right now. Checkmate. Cool name. Really, really cool name for a scent. Ooh, this is rose. Let's see, is there rose in this? Of course there is. Bulgarian rose, magnolia, may rose, rose centifloria. Bourbon, tobacco, patchouli, tree mosses, the base notes, um, champagne, divana, and red currant. I'm a huge fan of divana. Divana and fragrances makes it smell expensive. Devana makes any fragrance smell expensive and interesting. I'm a huge fan of Devana. I like this too. Um, this is a really, really good rose scent. It's different too. It's very, very different. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way from what I'm smelling because I made a sample for um, a couple of my clients today. And one of the samples that I made for my client, I had to spray into a vial and I had to spray um, Strange Love on my skin <laughs> to spray it into the bottle because the, the sprayer is very, very like, you know, it's not the best sprayer. So I'm spraying Strange Love. It's an $800 fragrance, too. I'm spraying what? Um, Dead of Night, which is like the funkiest of their oud fragrances from, from Strange Love. And I'm spraying that, spraying that. And honestly, it is all over my fingers. And it's interfering with my nose while I'm smelling this because my fingers are holding this. So, I mean, let me do this. There we go. Yeah, that's a good rose. A good, a really, really good rose. Solid, easy to wear, clean, um, with a lot of earthiness to it. A lot of um, earthiness, dirt, gur to it. Um, a fan. I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of this. Uh, I really like this rose. This is a rose a man could wear. But a woman is going to kill this scent. Oh, my goodness. Damn. I would like to smell the neck of the female wearing that. Um, that's a beautiful, beautiful rose um, that a man or a woman could easily wear. I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed by that fragrance. Like, really, really impressed by Checkmate. Go off. Okay, um... So the next fragrance from this company is a scent called Kaisa. Hmm. Kaisa is the name of this one. And let's look at this. This is 
This is interesting. I never I never heard of a Kaisa before. Wow. Okay. So reading this, de descending from the heavens in an inspired bouquet, Kaisa demonstrates the lengths we go for love. Hmm. Kaisa demonstrates the limps we go for love. So, like, <laughs> interesting. Um, the black licorice note expresses an inner mystery that seduces the heart and mind as the flames of passion ignite. Infatuation unfolds in opulent notes of florals cascading into a sensual musk ambrosia. Okay. Very floral. Very floral. So floral you can smell the petals of the flower. So floral you can smell the leaves holding up the petals. Excuse me. You can smell the stem holding up the leaves holding up the petals. Like, it's very green, very floral, very fruity. Interesting. Um, it's a beautiful floral. It's definitely leaning feminine. I'm starting to think. I'm wondering if the black bottles are leaning more masculine and the uh, white bottles are leaning more feminine. I'm wondering. Because this is another one that's very on the pretty side. White gardenia, and it's being marketed on this on this card as having white gardenia and ylang ylang. Interesting. I'm a huge fan of ylang ylang. Ylang ylang is a, a beautiful yellow floral that adds an awesome creaminess to fragrance. And usually ylang ylang is paired with vanilla because they work insane together. Um, something creamy with ylang ylang will kill. Sandalwood Ylang Ylang will do an amazing job. I can imagine cocoa and Ylang Ylang. I've never smelled the fragrance with cocoa and Ylang Ylang. I'd want to, though. Oh, well. Let's see. Anything creamy with Ylang Ylang is going to kill. And, I'll, and it's weird saying it. Ylang Ylang. I, I don't think it's Ylang Ylang. I think it's Ylang Ylang. Because Ylang Ylang sounds more elegant and expensive. Ylang Ylang. Sounds kind of weird. <laughs> ylang ylang sounds like what you call a private part, you know, when you don't want to be vulgar. That ylang ylang. You know? <laughs> but um, <laughs> bottom line, I don't know if I'm into it. I think it smells beautiful, though, but I don't think I would want this because, again, it's a little too pretty for my taste. But I do want to smell this on someone else. I think a woman wearing this would smell divine. It's very, very, very beautiful. Very interesting also. Like, one of the things I'm noticing with mind games, they're not repeating what's on the market. They're not doing what's already been done. And I got to appreciate that. Or at least if they're doing things that are, that are what you would expect, they're trying to make it a little less expected, a little more interesting so that it's not repeating what's already out there. And I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that effort. Um, a lot of brands don't really think like that. You know, it seems like a lot of brands don't do market research when they're putting out a perfume. It's as if they don't literally go from house to house to house and smell what their competition is doing. It seems as if it's like brands just make things and if their inner team likes it, that's all that matters. But honestly, you really, when you're making fragrances in 2023 with all the perfumes on the market, you have to take time out to find out what your competition is doing. Just so you can make even more certain that you're not making repeated fragrances on this market because everything smells like everything these days. So it's really cool to smell a line that's intentionally, and you can tell they're intentionally, not trying to dupe other things, although I did smell a Santal-ish type of fragrance. So there's that. But for the most part, these fragrances are not like 
clones of other fragrances and whoa i am really into this one guys this is called azuli's diamond azuli's diamond oh oh my yeah i am Oh, this is so good, dudes and girls. This is like a, oh, man. Azuli's Diamond. What the hell is in this? Okay, I'm, I, I got to go to the notes right now, 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 <laughs> right now, right now, right now. I got to go to the notes right now, right now. This is like major, 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 major. Okay. Um, Azuli's Diamond came out in 2022. Who is the perfumer? Okay, of course. Of course. Who made this? The legend, Anique Minardo. Anique Minardo made this fragrance, which is so, so... Oh, my goodness. Okay, this fragrance, Bergamot Fig Leaf. My favorite, one of my favorite notes. I'm smelling the green. Getting that. Mandarin orange broom, ylang ylang, <laughs> tonka bean, amber wood, frankincense, myrrh, and a poppin' axe. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is my favorite fragrance so far from the collection. This is sickly beautiful, guys. That opening blew my mind, and now it's drying down. Definitely smelling the ylang ylang, and it's not paired with vanilla in this fragrance, so it's definitely expressing itself in a very interesting, unique way. Definitely, I smell the fig leaf. That greenness in the beginning is there. Um, a slight incensey, vetter, uh, not vetiver, and slightly incensey type of like. Um, balsamic um <laughs> yeah yeah I, but when i was saying this side of the tracks must be feminine i don't know this blew this this destroyed that theory um i would buy this i would absolutely buy this there's nothing that i own that smells like it it's a beautiful scent I love frankincense. I love myrrh. I love a poppin' axe. I'm into resins. I'm into balsamic fragrances. This is doing it. I love the fact that it doesn't have any pretty flowers. To me, yalong yalong is more of a sexy flower. It doesn't come across pretty, you know. Yalang yalang, yalong yalong. Uh, doesn't remind me of of like a, a. It's not like peony or like heliotrope or you know like like. Um, there's there's certain there's certain magnolia there's certain fragrances there's certain flowers that just smell like uber pretty ylang ylang doesn't ylang 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 doesn't smell that way <laughs> guys this is insanity oh my goodness asuli's diamond is a diamond this is di this is a diamond fragrance this is absolutely beautiful i'm wondering what it will do on my skin. Ah, I have so many fragrances on me. But this is inspiring me. This is inspiring me to try. And I'm just hoping it smells as good on my skin as it does on paper. That is sick. It's very unique. Very interesting. Oh, on my skin is just even more interesting. Okay, on my skin, it's green as hell. It is, like, my skin is pulling out all the green elements from this bottle, from this fragrance. I would, I love this. It's super green on my skin, though, guys. Like, but damn, is it interesting. Oh, man, do I love this. I love stuff like this. Oh. This is so interesting. Oh, yeah. 
Asuli's Diamond is killing it. As Zuli, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how that is said. As Zuli, I'm imagining, but she is just good and I think this is the rook yeah this is the rook this is the diagonal piece on the check chessboard by the way um mind games Kaisa this was the queen and of course it smells very pretty it smells very feminine this is the floral one I was talking about from the white bottles and this is the queen. So definitely fascinating how the queen is a very beautiful, like floral, very pretty floral. And the king is a coffee rose scent. <laughs> Checkmate is sick, guys. Um, it dries down really well. But Azuli's diamond, I don't own anything like that. That is, that is sick. That is, that is, that is crazy. That is so freaking crazy. Like, who thought of that? <laughs> Anik Monado thought of it, of course. That, that woman, oh man. Anik Monado is a legend as a perfumer, guys. Just really quick, just to give you an idea of what she's done since we're here. Um, cause people, people just don't be knowing. People just don't be knowing. Um, the most popular fragrance she did was Boss Bottle. She did Hypnotic Poison, Bois d'Argent, um, Cool Water Intense, <laughs> Potion, Bulgari Black, The Hockey Puck, Coco Rico, Cockadoodle Doo um, from Jean Paul Gaultier. She did J. Poor Own, one of my favorite spicy fragrances of all time, Lolita Limpica, O Masculine. This Lolita Limpica is a legend. Like, this woman is is insane. Boss Bottle alone gets her tons of love. Visit for Men by Azaro, a very slept on fragrance. This fragrance, special, the reason why I didn't like it as much is because I knew how much it cost. If I didn't know how much that fragrance cost, I would have appreciated it so much more. If you would have gifted me Visit and said that it was like $150, I would have treated it a lot better than I treated it. <laughs> Um, when I figured it, it was like what it was, I was like, eh, and I kind of like plate plate it like it wasn't nothing. But that fragrance is, it's a very beautiful tea scent. He, she did portrayal figment. Like this woman did amazing fragrances, um, and is a legend in the fragrance world. Of course, a lot of, oh, she did overture woman. Come on. Anik Monado is, is. Crazy. Obsessed for women. Amazing fragrance for ladies. Uh, um, Armani Privé, Ecot Rouge. This fragrance, beautiful. Like, Anique Monado. That's all you got to know. O, o Masculine, Lolita Limpica. One of my favorite dark fragrances of all time from a designer brand. Um, yeah, like, this woman is insane. And she kept it going when she made, <laughs> when she made a Sully's Diamond. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, I like that a lot. Um, it's very interesting, guys. It's not going to appeal to all people, but it definitely appeals to me. Um, so, yeah. Anik Monado, I had to go down that rabbit hole real quick. <laughs> but, yeah, that, guys, uh, Asuli's Diamond is definitely a really beautiful green fragrance with some spice and incense. The next fragrance is going to be a scent called Blockade. And... Blockade. Let's see what this is doing. So this is the second to last fragrance that I have for you all. Yeah. Two more left. Ooh, Blockade is nice. This is more citrusy. Bergamot, mango skin, tomato leaf, pink pepper, cyclamen, lavender, mango blossom, star anise. Ambrose Star, I guess an Ambroxan alternative. Oud, patchouli, and suede. 
The oud in this fragrance, if there is any, is definitely a small, small amount. It's adding, I guess you could say, character to the fragrance, but it's not coming out. I don't smell oud yet. I smell a ton of bergamot. I definitely, definitely notice the tomato leaf. I definitely get the mango. I really, really like this too. <laughs> oh gosh, blockade is nice. Um, blockade is reminding me of something and I can't put my finger on it and that pisses me off because Lord knows I'm going to be like, what does it smell like? What does it smell like? It reminds me a little bit of Frenchy, Frenchy Levon by Galan that like almost, um, almost like a, an Italian icy type of experience. It also kind of reminds me a little bit of, of, um, I've smelled, I've smelled people trying to dupe a Ventus and there's components of that, of those type of dupes that kind of remind me of what I'm smelling here. This does not smell like a Ventus though. This is not an Aventus dupe at all. Oh, this is, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. First of all, mango is very, very difficult to do in perfume. It's very difficult to do a mango fragrance per properly because you have to create the accord for mango. You can't like, like draw the, the oil of a mango from its skin. So usually when you smell mango, it's an interpretation of what mango smells like. This interpretation is so severe. This is seriously awesome. This is beautiful. Um, I love this. This is like the type of fragrance that I would wear in the summer. This would be like one of my, this would be a summer fragrance that I would kill. And it's not just typical like summer-ish type of scent. But it is so pretty, so attractive. I shouldn't even say pretty. It's beautiful though. It's not a pretty fragrance. It's not like, um, like Keisha, Keisa, Keisa. Damn, this is sick. I really love this. <laughs> I really love it. Blockade is knocking me out. Um, I have one last fragrance that's getting on my skin. I have one last fragrance. It's called Castling. Castling. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's go. Wow, this is attractive too. Wow. This is another very green Green, green, <laughs> just very green and floral is what this reminds me of. And wait a minute. Okay. So it says white woods and fig are the main notes in this fragrance. Yeah, that's, that's it. I agree. I agree. Very pretty. Very, 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 very attractive. Um, I got to tell you guys, um, <laughs> I got to tell you guys, the the word about mind games was that they make really good fragrances. And I got to tell you, they do. They really, really, really do. They make beautiful, modern. There's nothing that I rem that reminded me of a classic perfume. Everything comes across as forward and different. Damn. Yeah. 
Another round of applause for an independent brand doing their thing. Absolutely impressive. Absolutely impressive. I gotta, like, let me go through them again, and I'm gonna tell you what I think are my favorites from the line. Uh, let's just go. Blockade, seriously beautiful. Seriously beautiful. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So, Blockade, let's go. It's getting a lady. Oh, this is. Blockade, absolutely lovable. Sickly beautiful. Um, Castling, I think this is great. I have a lot of fake fragrances, and this isn't wowing me, but I like it. I like it a lot. I actually like the fig in a different scent that they did, which is Asuli's Diamond. This fragrance is fig leaf, and the fig is, it's awesome. This is an amazing green fragrance. If you're a fan of green perfumes, if you're a fan of fragrances that are different, interesting, green, <sighs> Asuli's Diamond, guys. Um, Asuli's Diamond is 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 crazy, 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 crazy. Um, Kaisa. Okay, yeah, and Asuli's Diamond. Let's just give it the lady right now. Come on now. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. So Kaisa, a beautiful fragrance. I definitely see this as being a scent that a lot of women will want to know exists. If you're a person that, if you're a, if you have feminine taste in perfume, if you can appreciate a feminine scent, you're gonna love Kasia, Kaisa. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's 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 good. <laughs> it's really really good. It's really good. And this is definitely the queen on the board. Let's see if I can get this to... This is the queen on the chessboard for sure. Absolutely. Kaisa is, is the queen on this chessboard for sure. Um, I like it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't prioritize it though. Castling, I like it. I wouldn't prioritize it, but I think this is a sickly, sickly awesome fig. If you're a fan of fig, you're going to like that. Checkmate. Checkmate, I love rose. This is a really good rose. It's a rose I've smelled before, but I don't hate it. I think it's beautiful. I've just smelled this before. but I really like it. It's a great rose for a gentleman. If you're a guy who likes a rose scent, but you don't like the idea of wearing rose because sometimes they come across a little bit too femme, you're gonna be okay with this one. This is not a femme rose. This is not, this is feminine friendly, but it's also masculine friendly, if I would say too. Um, I don't get dewy roses from mom's bathroom or air freshener rose. This is a, like a soft, frilly, fa la 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 type of rose. This is definitely a, this is, this is rose, but a rose that a man could wear with ease. Um, and it's the king check chessboard. Uh, it's the king on the chessboard. And yeah, you see that little crown up there? So this is the king. That was a queen. Both of them to be the king and the queen. I definitely appreciate them. Um, I like Checkmate a lot, but I don't know if I would prioritize it. I would have to try it on skin first, but I really, really like Checkmate too for rose fragrance. Um, let's get into these black bottles. Grandmaster. Oh yeah, let's go. She, that, um, <laughs> I got a, you know. That damn blockade, though. The more I smell Checkmate, though, 
It's got a little bit of, it's got a jamminess to it. It kind of reminds me of Oud Satin Mood a little bit. This is in a world of Oud Satin Mood. If you're a fan of MFK's Oud Satin Mood, Checkmate will definitely be right up your alley. Which is probably why I wouldn't prioritize it. It smells good though. But it reminds me of something else, so I don't like fragrances that remind me too much of other things. When a fragrance reminds me of something else, I'd rather get the other thing. Unless that fragrance is doing it so amazingly that it makes me forget the other thing. Or make me say, what other thing? This doesn't do that, though. But I like it. I really would. I would easily, easily suggest Checkmate without question. Um, Grandmaster. Oh, I forgot. It's got to get the lady. Yeah. Because Checkmate is awesome, so it deserves it. Okay, um, Grandmaster. Yeah. Grandmaster is the king of the chessboard. Beautiful coffee. It's getting a lady. I would buy this without... Sick, sick, sick. Grandmaster. I need to, prior I need to like put these in order for you all. I'm going to try my best. Jadoub. Oof, Jadoub. Jadoub is a really good, uh, a really, really good fruity fragrance, guys. Oh, man. Ah, oh, Jadoub is good. I thought Jadoub was a little too pretty. I thought it was going to be a little femme, 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 femme when I first smelled it. And I was like, eh, I like it, but it's a little bit Herba pura ish and a little bit overly fruit. But now that it's calmed down, I'm really into it. It almost has like the ashiness that comes from um, Bond Number no. Nine, Sin of Peace for Him. You know how like Sin of Peace for Him is trying to dupe Aventus, but allegedly, but with like a with like a ashiness as opposed to the woodiness from Aventus. That's what I'm getting from this. There's the ashiness in this fragrance that is pretty interesting, along with the fruit. But I think the ashiness makes it a little bit more. Friendly for a guy's taste if you're into a fruity scent. If you're if you're a guy and you don't want to smell like a woman's scent, this would not be overly femme to you. I would think it's it's something a guy could wear with these. I I like it. I don't know if I like it more than blockade personally speaking because they're both fruit. They're both beautiful fruity experiences. If I were to choose between these two, I probably would go with blockade only because of the spicy mango vibe that it's doing jadoub i like oh i'd like them both jadoub could be a great day fragrance blockade could be your summer night scent i just i really <laughs> they did like i don't even know how to like i like i need time to think about that these two are really beautiful Okay, and now the last two was Scholar's Mate, Santal, eh. Okay, and Garde. So, yeah, guys, I know I kind of threw it. <laughs> Scholar's Mate, I'm not a fan. Um, it's just too close to what's already out, so it's thwop. Uh, but Garde... Very interesting iris popcorn scent. You're not going to smell anything like this on the market right now. This is very fascinatingly unique. I dig it. I really dig it. But if I were to like put these in my order, if I were to put these in order from like number one all the way to whatever the hell, um, all the way to nine. Damn, this is a tough one. This is really, really, really tough. Okay. Um, so how I would arrange these. Okay. This is, this is completely off the cuff. This is me not doing enough research. This is me just going based on what I'm smelling on paper. But if based on what I'm smelling, what is attractive to me, who? I love... Let me see. Damn, this is tough. It's really tough.
Damn, this is tough. Okay, I would say... Okay, I'm going to say Grandmaster is my number one. Grandmaster is my number one. Um, it's an amazing coffee experience. I've never smelled anything like it, and that's one of the reasons why I love it so much. It's a very unique, interesting take on a coffee experience, and it's very authentic. That's, that's, that's a special fragrance. This is a scent that will very much stand out in a room, um, and I love scents like that. So this would be my number one. My number two is between Jadoub. No, it's between, yeah, Asuli's Diamond. Asuli's Diamond is number two, guys. That is sick. That is, oh my gosh. Yeah, Asuli's Diamond, number two. <laughs> um. Number three, Blockade, without question. Number four, Jadoub. Nice fragrance. Ooh, I don't know. Wow. I like Checkmate. Checkmate's number five. Good rose, but again, Oud Silk Mood. Garde would be number six. Garde might be number five. I think I put Garde number five because it's a lot more interesting, a lot more unique, and a lot more original than Checkmate. But Checkmate is <laughs> a six, 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 number six. That fragrance in a lot of brands would probably be like one of their top three fragrances. For Mind Game, for it to be, in my opinion, like their sixth best scent based on what I'm smelling on paper. Woof. Damn. This brand is sick, guys. And last but not least, between Kaisa and Castling. Castling. Would be my number seven, and Kaisa would be my number eight. And I gotta say, guys, if I was a woman, Cassia could be my number one. That's really good. If I was a female, this could easily be my number one. It could be. It's it's pretty. It's absolutely beautiful, and it's a, it's it's very appropriate that this fragrance is the queen of this collection. Very appropriate. But yeah, my top three guys, and this is insane. Uh, Grandmaster, Asuli's Diamond, Blockade. Those three are really, really good. Jadoub, of course, but Jadoub is going to probably be like the best seller of this launch of this line and probably the sandalwood scent those two i can imagine most people who shop at sephora macy's or uh, places that are like kind of like entry-level fragrance vibes they would easily get into jadu i could also see them like in asuli's diamond it's that's <laughs> But Jadoub is, to me, going to be like their Herba Pura. I could see this being like their Kirke from this collection. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm really, really impressed with Mind Games. They did an amazing job. I'm kind of like wondering, though, like, what can you do after you, like, okay, so there's only, what, 24 pieces on the chessboard, right? I think. There's 12, 12 pawns and then six of each side, I think. Yeah, right? Or isn't it 12? I think so. Anyway, <laughs> I'm curious. Like, they've done a bunch of fragrances based on, like, the main chess pieces, like the rook, the the castle, the, the king, the queen, um... What do you do once you, like, when you create more fragrances, is it going to be, like, pawn one, pawn two, pawn three? Like, how do you do, like, how do you 
And does who wants to smell like a pawn, you know? I wonder how they're going to, like, expand the collection from this once they have other ideas. Like, are they going to start calling their fragrances the names of certain moves in the chess world? I'm kind of curious where they go with this. Where does this... Where they where does where does this all go? You know, uh, but I love the beginning. The start is pretty pretty fascinating. Um, it's not easy to come out with this many fragrances and they all be well done. That's very impressive to me. Um, I personally would never do a brand where I come out with ten fragrances in one year at one time. I just think that's overkill. But I think they did an amazing job doing it because they did every one of them very effectively and they did every one of them with i guess you could everyone is a credible perfume it doesn't remind me of fragrances that are just thrown together by people who just want to make money off of like collectors or people who love to smell good this really feels like they thought it out i'm also i'm i'm just curious where it goes you know because you've already done a king you've already done a queen there's only a certain amount of pieces on the chessboard where do you go from there you know I guess you again you can get into moves or you know maybe different you know maybe you can go um yeah i don't know there's a lot of cool chess board moves in the world of chess so they already um they already named the fragrance checkmate <laughs> they already did that checkmate is the rosy king scent this is the king of the of the this is the king basically Checkmate. I would have called it the king. They wasted a name. They called it Checkmate. <laughs> um, that's funny. I, I don't know. I would not want to be the, the creative director of this brand. Maybe these nine, maybe these ten fragrances are going to be all they ever make. Who knows? But I got to tell you, impressive, impressive, impressive line. You could tell whoever created this loves perfume. You could tell the creative director, the founders, the people who created this brand absolutely loves perfume. You can tell. It's not even like a, it's like a, they put their foot in this. Anyway, I'm curious what you all think of Mind Games. Do you all like their fragrances? Do you all wear their fragrances? I'm really, really curious. Um, I find that a lot of their fragrances are very approachable also. So I don't see people smelling them and going ill. You know, I could see most people finding something in this collection that's there's something I think for any and everyone, whether you're like into stinky cheese type of fragrances, whether you're into like cheddar, American cheese type fragrances that eat entry level scents, I think they have something for everyone. But the fragrance that I'm really, 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 really appreciating a lot is Blockade and Asuli's. Blockade and Asuli's, um, where the hell did Blockade go? Ah, Blockade and Asuli's Diamond. That's really, really, really nice. And Grandmaster. Yeah, those three. Those are my favorite three. Damn. Okay, guys. So anyway, <laughs> um, I'm really excited. Um Next week, I'm trying to decide which, what the show is going to be. Next week, I'm deciding between a new line, Pink Mahogany, a Black-owned fragrance house that everyone has been talking about low-key. Um, Pink Mahogany, I heard, has some really cool scents to explore, and it's, from, it's another independent brand. And I'm really into like talking about these independent brands now because I really feel like they deserve a lot more attention. I work for an independent brand, um, the maker, uh, and I love the fragrances that they make. Uh, I literally chose to work with the maker over very established brands because 
I wanted to work with a brand that wanted to create fragrances that were interesting, not just nice. And I think that's what the maker does. And that's what a lot of indie brands do. And that's one of the reasons why on this channel lately, I've been trying to like expose independent brands. So Savoir Fair, amazing brand. Henley, amazing brand. And now Mind Games, amazing brand. All these lines have absolutely impressed me. And I would definitely say you have to consider them. Um, you would, I would say definitely get a sample pack of these fragrance brands and experience them for yourself and see if they fit your style and taste. Um, hold up. Who is, really Carlos? All I know is that they're jacking up their prices soon. Oh, really? Mind Games is jacking up their prices? Let me see, what is a mind game fragrance retailing for? Uh, that is fascinating um, and kind of weird that they're already raising prices after only two years of being in business. But I guess that's not too weird. That's probably to be expected, I should say. Um, Ah, okay, let me show you my, my, my screen, guys, um, just to break down what this brand is doing. It feels as though they are creating the same pieces in both the black and the white. I'm curious to know what the differences are. I, I don't feel like all of the black, all of the dark fragrances weren't all dark and all of the light fragrances weren't all light. Um, interesting way they divide these brands um their fragrances but let me see what is their price point right now so if i wanted to buy grand master which i really dug it would cost ooh oh 375 for 100 mil and they only make 100 mils ooh so i mean it's a 100 mil at least yay thank for that thank you for that it's not going too hard like Roja 50 mils are. So, eh. but you are right. That is a high price point and they're about to raise prices. Really? That's kind of, whoa. <laughs> ouch, 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 ouch. I would still buy these. I would definitely still buy them. Um... Forgive me, guys. Um... So I do like, I do feel like there are, I do feel like there are some options here that are worth 375. I do feel like I, I would spend 375 on Jadoub. I would spend 375 on, on Grandmaster. I would spend 375 on Azuli's Diamond and Blockade. The only thing is, is I would have to make sure these last on me. I would have to make sure that they stick on my skin because I would not want to spend $375 for a fragrance that goes away like in an hour or two. So that would be the main, main sticking point, whether they would be worth it for me to purchase them. But I have to say, based on how they smell, they're worth it. Based on what the smell is, they smell like they are worth it. <laughs> but the price point, ooh. Ooh, damn, that's kind of high. And if they're going up uh, even more, ouch. Um, but just to let you all know, Bergdorf Goodman does a gift card event in September. I don't know if Mind Games will be in the store before then, but Bergdorf Goodman does a gift card event where you can, and they do it at the end of the year in December also, September, December, November-ish, December, I believe. So they do gift cards where like if you spend over a certain amount, you automatically get like either 50, 100, 250 or a thousand dollars deducted off your total. So there are tiers. So when you spend 400, you receive 100 off. So you get basically the fragrance for 300. So it's a great way to get the fragrances that you love with kind of close to like fragrance net prices, but Bergdorf Goodman product. So, um, and they're not expired product either. So that's also a benefit when you don't deal with gray market websites. Although I do support, I buy gray market. It depends on the brand. I'll buy gray market things like Mandarina Duck, 
brands that you really can't find outside of the gray market world. Um, I would also buy like, you know, brands that don't get hurt by me supporting them on a gray market. If you're a brand that's a small indie brand, I'm going to support you through your website or your, your retailer that you actually are official with. But I like to support brands that I like, especially when they are they're 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 young or they're small. You know, these are brands that really, really need our support because the world is too focused on the same old Baccarats and the same old Lotus Chanel's and the same old Santal's and the same old Ombre Leathers. So um, support the fragrance brands that you love. Tip them by supporting them. And you don't always have to spend all your money there. You know, get a sample pack, get a travel bottle, but spend your money. Spend your money with the brands that do the things that you love. That's a great way to support those brands and to ensure that those brands don't go away. Like Atelier Cologne. Like Serge Luton. Like a lot of awesome brands that are not here and available anymore. So anyway, let's do that work, guys. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I am absolutely grateful for you all being here to experience this collection with me. I have to say, Mind Games is impressive as hell. I can't wait till this brand is in the store. And if you need any help at Bergdorf Goodman, hit me up. Let me know what you all need. I will definitely be there to support you if you need samples, whatever. Just let me know because I got you because you all got me. So it's a pleasure to support my audience that supports me. So thank you so much. And you'll never pay for any sample you request from me. So request them. <laughs> Um, guys, thank you so much for joining my live, as always, on Wednesdays from 6 to 7 here live at the one and only Bergdorf Goodman. I am that cologne guy, E, and this is Simply Put Sense. And I'm simply O-U-T. Peace.